Infinite maps. You can now make your sandbox maps as big as you want. The size limit was removed. This map is so big, I can't even see it with the default render distance. I have to go into the code and add a couple zeros to the far Z plane. This map is so big, and it's not even the maximum size, because as far as I'm aware, there isn't one. This map is five times the size of the Source 1 grid. I'm in the editor now, and we can see just how huge this map is. That's the size of a player. If I go into my 2D view, you can see how large this map is. I can't even zoom out far enough. I have to shrink my camera and then go full screen to see just how big this map is. So this box right here is the old Source 1 Gary's Mod map size. In Gary's Mod, it was impossible to make a map larger than that size. Every large map you see in Gary's Mod is actually the exact same size. There are a couple tricks to make it seem bigger. This map, True North, has two layers in it in a big detailed skybox, so it looks like the map is huge, but really the entire map fits on this grid. Half-Life Alex actually had this limitation too. You could build map geometry past the boundary, but you couldn't actually go past it, and neither could entities. A few weeks ago, they completely rewrote how the player entity works. You can learn about it in my video, Sandbox's Day of Pain, but a byproduct of that was you can now go past the grid. Right now, there are a few issues. The big ones are lighting is kind of glitchy when you go far out, and physics props don't work past the border. Other entities and the players still work though. Here I spawned a zombie, which I'll show off Left. later. Left. <laughs> Left. Left. Here I spawned a zombie, which I'll show off later. I, it works, there's no nav mesh, so they stand still, but I can also fire my projectile arrows at them and kill them. Their ragdoll disappears though because it's a physics prop. Those issues will be fixed later. It's so cool saying that map size removed. It gives me a lot of ideas for maps to make. Personally, I think I might make SCP-3008, the infinite IKEA. I can have it procedurally generated too. Here I'm on construct in the sandbox mode. They added a couple new entities here. They added some more explosive barrels, a chair, which doesn't actually do anything, but these barrels work. Oops, I have to shoot them. They don't have the explosion particles or sounds though, unlike this other one. I'm sure that'll be added soon. I don't know what these entities are. I think these are in here by mistake. They also added a couple guns. They added the shotgun and the SMG. They have infinite ammo right now and reloading doesn't do anything, but you can spawn them. Construct was updated a little, but it hasn't been compiled and uploaded yet. We do have the raw uncompiled map though. Oh wow, this is different from before. <laughs> I looked at this yesterday and now it's different, okay. So they added a car parking lot. You can see it here. Is there a ramp on the roof? No, there's no ramp on the roof. And they added, they changed this area. Here's the light room. Looks like it's smaller maybe. In the dark room. Oh, they changed it into one building now, that's a shame. It looks like they built up the landscape a little more. Oop get this out of the way and they added a bridge it looks like there's a little canal area and it leads out into the infinite ocean don't worry about all this weird skybox stuff in this 3d skybox i think it's going to be disabled i wonder if they will make interiors to these houses that'd be really cool they were working on automatic fgd generation if you don't know what that is basically it'll automatically generate entities in Hammer for you to place down based on your code entities. I haven't actually used it yet, so I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I'm sure it will be very useful. This map is not construct, by the way. What it is, is my zombie horde map. So last week they added NPCs to Sandbox. I took the NPCs and I turned them into zombies and I made this infinite zombie horde mode. So basically there's zombies that come running at you and you have to shoot them. This game mode is just a basic test game mode. It has infinite zombies, weapons spawning around the map, and you just survive for as long as you can. When you die, you'll respawn, but all your zombies will go target another player if there's more players on the server. I have three different zombie types. The regular zombie, this big strong zombie, he takes a lot of bullets, and a fast zombie. Looks like there's one over there. He's just gonna zoom towards me real soon. Whoa. My shotgun power attack doesn't even one shot. The, wow, this guy's got a lot of health. Powerful. So I set up the zombies so they can climb walls and they can jump off buildings too. If I go up here, you'll see the zombies will be able to navigate to me. So the zombies will actually navigate to me up here. And if I go back up here, the zombies will climb up the wall. 
and they'll even jump down after me if I jump. What I plan on doing is making a Left 4 Dead style campaign game mode where people can make Left 4 Dead maps in Sandbox in Source 2. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I'm gonna switch over to my testing mode now. That was the published version. This is my debug testing mode. It has a little bit more features, it's more up to date. So I have the knife, I have the default pistol. This one's actually a magnum, it sounds a little different. I just took a free public domain sound effect for this. The shotgun, the SMG, the crossbow, and a med kit. Also the zombie spawner debug gun. So if I take a little bit of damage, I can heal up with the med kit. There's no view model for it, and the world model is just a hot dog. The view model is the rust pipe shotgun for now. I can't use it if I'm at full HP. So these zombies are actually so cool. I'll spawn one on that roof, and on this roof, and the zombies will actually path towards me. They'll jump off the roofs and climb over walls to get to me. We have so much control over the AI and navigation in Sandbox, and they haven't even set it up properly yet. This is just with the very basic, bare minimum nav mesh. I'm very excited to see what other people make in the future. Something that's being worked on right now, though, is the RTS game mode. Face Punch is working on this. I made the zombie game mode. So right now, they added a base, and NPCs, two NPCs spawn. Well, one for each team. So the NPCs can attack each other. I can move my unit around. I can go over to the enemy's base, wherever that is. And I can shoot it by clicking on it. We're randomly assigned team colors. I got green, this guy got yellow. I've seen blue and red before, so it's random. This mode will be up to four players. I assume in a free-for-all battle mode. There might be a team mode too. This is very exciting. I've seen in the commits that they made it so players can build buildings and units, but that doesn't seem to be published yet. What is published though is this video. It's over. But what's not over is my new videos. Starting next week, I'm going to be putting out a tutorial video every Monday, in addition to my sandbox news. You might also see some bonus videos on Wednesday or other days of the week. Like, comment, and subscribe. It's over.